and since the this last section here I believe in the previous video uh, in the morning session uh, because uh, I had some difficulty in the um, in the connections I think it's not recorded the this session the, uh, I mean it, it's just until up until here so now I will just continue from here okay so we cover the loss of our session in the morning so we have uh, so the idea is if we have this region so the first is the idea is let me erase this whole you have this region R with the square and the segment which is in x equal negative 2 to 2 a y from negative 2 to 2 and you have this um, factor that you need to evaluate okay so you have um, this function here the, f uh, the factor function the, the 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 field the factor field that you need to evaluate and since p q and its its own partial x partial y of p and q they are not continuous at origin because we are going to evaluate at this curve this r then one idea that that's that that we can do is we are going to make some hole in here so that's this one idea and that will be our uh, topics okay so we will have a region but with a hole so we can remove any discontinuity okay with that hole because we still have um, region r that is still connected right still connected okay okay so we can start with the region with holes Let me check. Do I have? Oh, I didn't prepare. Okay, let me let me just draw. It's just a simple drawing. Okay. Let me just draw. Uh, okay, but this is the hole. We have the hole here. Let's say the hole is there. Okay, and we have the this is R. Okay, we have the random random curve and the green one is the hole and the hole itself it has another curve let's say this is um this is this is c1 and this is c2 okay let me make another copy let's copy this okay and then we are going to make into subset of regions. So let's say we have here a line. Let's say that is the line, and that is the line. So this line is taking this becomes two regions uh, region R1 and let me erase this R and R2 okay okay so if we look the C1 C1 is going to have a 
going to the left, right? Going to counterclockwise, right? So counterclockwise. And C2 is clockwise. And then from this, so, so this is the, 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 the idea is from here. Okay. So we have C1 and C2. C1 is counterclockwise, C2 is clockwise, right? And then we connect this C1 and C2 with some line and making the region R becomes two region R1 and R2. This is uh, what we've done here. So practically, if we see how we can make this uh, make sense, we could add the arrow. So this goes to be here. So it's going counterclockwise, right? That's the R2. And the other one going from here, right? And that's going to be uh, R1. So from here, going here, going down here, here, okay. That's the R1, okay? R2 goes from here, going to here, and then, yeah close curve okay and note that the C from the uh, maybe from here from C is going to include both C1 and C2 so if we introduce this the, the cross cut here the the new radians into the system then we can apply the Green's theorem so let me write the, the original equation okay, that's the original one let me write that R becoming R1 let me just write same with for all component and plus the R2. Okay. Okay, now for R1, it's counterclockwise. Okay, counterclockwise. So we can write. This is going to be positive PDX plus QDY. And then plus the second one, this is C1, C2. This is going to be negative directions. This is PDX and plus PDY. And then finally, this is we can write. So this is going to be so so the idea here is I, I think I will just give you example okay, to see uh, the summary. Okay, let me just give you the same equation as before. So C is C1 and C2. And let me write 
this is the same as what we have here so let me uh let me make a new one i think it's simple c is from here all right and we define the green one the square as c1 and then we have a hole that we define here okay a little bit up okay this will be c2 And let the C2 goes clockwise. Okay. So based on what we have, so let's say P is this and Q is this. So first we can write down the partial. You can use the uh, quotient rule so to uh, negative 1, right? Negative 1 multiply with the x squared plus y squared, so y squared minus x squared. And then negative. Uh, negative y oh maybe yeah it's correct right let me let me check so negative uh 2y minus Uh, negative x squared plus y squared negative so yeah uh, plus 2 y squared yeah okay it's correct and then the partial partial x of q we have this and it will be um, x squared plus y squared minus x and 2x so we have y squared minus x squared the same And since since we have this condition with a hole, it's it's kind of different from what we have. This one, although the same functions, the same vector field. But here, since we remove the discontinuity, then all the terms p, q, the partials, they are all continuous, right? They are all continuous. So let me write here as a note. A note the p, q partial. continues on R okay and then we can rewrite this integration double integral R y squared minus x squared okay, from here you can write and then minus 
same. Since it's the same, then it will be equal to equal to zero. Okay, now from all these terms, the intro here and this example, we can draw a conclusion that is very important in the next in the next next examples. So we can replace any any curve, any path that has complicated path, we can replace with a much more simpler path. Okay. okay. By the way, have you all checked your midterm result? If you have any question, you can email me. Okay, let me continue. So from here, we can draw conclusions that if we have Let's say this is closed curve, positive, right? Let's say this is C1, and then we have a whole curve Let's say we have the same direction here, C2, and of course this is R So suppose that C1 and C2 are two non-intersecting piecewise smooth curve or simple closed curve. I think path, I think better using path is to know that we are going to move okay. that have same direction counterclockwise, right? And then suppose further that P and Q have continuous partial first derivative partial first partial derivatives okay in the region R bounded by C1 and C2 then from all above here we could write positive to the left directions, right? We could plus. Let me change. This becomes negative C2, so I will change this into clockwise direction. This is 
equal zero. Or we could say that this is equal So, so first, the idea is this first partial here, okay? that's have the same value. Okay. Okay. Now we we are going to again looking at this uh, this this square and same uh, the same uh function okay let, let, let me just go and uh write how, how to how to solve this okay how to solve this yeah. so one way to solve this is first we can evaluate let me let me write here we can evaluate one 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 theorem or one method is by taking c into four curve right one way okay or if we if we're looking by through here we can solve by I think I will uh, I will take this and make a copy. Okay. Okay, and then we we note that this uh, this circle here the same direction. Let the half let the circle have the same direction, and maybe to make the same with the symbol, we make this as a C prime, and the outside is a C. Okay, the circle. C prime. Let let's say we have x squared plus y squared equal one, uh, one, and then the circle that lies entirely within C. Okay, so the circle is inside the, the C. Okay, and we know that our partial is equal right the q and the p is equal 
equal to this value, right? This is also the same with the partial partial x of q. Okay. And it follows that let me write the whole function. This is the same as integrations of c prime of negative y squared plus y squared dx plus. So, so we are making the uh, making the curve from c to c prime so we got we are making it smaller and then since c prime is x squared plus y squared equal one we take the parameterizations to make it uh, to solve this x squared plus y squared so take x equal cos t so this will be so since r is equal 1 and x is r cosine t, so we are going to make parameterizations and t is from 0 to 2 pi. So exchange all, all the, let me just copy again. Now we take the t from 0 to 2 pi and then taking this and since x squared plus y squared is just cos squared plus sine squared it's just 1 so we can have minus sine t and don't forget that we still have uh, dx dx is negative sine t dt and dy is cos dt okay so we will have negative sine t dt and a little bit going down here and plus cosine t cosine t dt and since this is going to be sine squared plus cos squared it's just one so we are having dt or this is just pi so the result 2 pi is really interesting because uh, for every so for every piecewise smooth close simple curve or simple closed curve C with origin in its interior so we need to choose that the C prime is x squared plus y squared equal a squared and the idea is to make this a need a really small that the circle lies inside the curve c okay okay so it depends on depends on uh, the, the the idea is depends on how big is our C. Okay. I think in the previous we are telling from the question we see that this is getting two, this is also negative two. So the, so it has the the the, uh, the distance, the size is four by four, and we have we see that we have two and negative two on the on the other side. So we need to make sure that. 
the circle, the radius, is small enough that it is still inside the C. Okay? So we don't want that this circle going to be like this. It's too big, right? It's too big. So we are going to make it small. So one is small enough for this to, make, to, to be happening. And then we can take it into our integrations and that's the, uh, the result. Okay. So I hope you get the idea uh, when you have a region you can imagine that there is a hole and we can we can take it into our uh, consideration okay so we need to make to make out the um, the hole uh, we need to make sure it's inside the 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 the, uh, the original curve Now before we move to the surface integral, take some uh, quick example. Um, maybe example, maybe later. I think I, we can move to the surface integral first. And we can look back later. Okay, now the surface integral. So what is surface integral? So before we have the line integrals, right? We have the line integrals. And now we have the surface integral. So before we have line that has integrals, and now we have the surface. So we can call this a higher dimensional equivalent to line integrals. So instead of a curve, we have a surface. So, so 
uh, instead of curves C, we will have surface X. Okay. Okay. Let me just go. Uh, giving you the idea okay recall the arc length the arc length is equal if we have interval a b for x axis This is our arc length. Right? So if arc length is in one uh, one problem, then the other problem, the counterpart, is to find the area of that portion of the surface S okay, given by some function of two variables. Okay. So let me give you the picture first okay let me just give you this and this is I think I already give also in calculus for some part but let me just take a look and review and uh, see what what does it mean okay so suppose that the inner the inner partition okay that is p okay, p of r or, or over the region r okay the over region r this is form uh, lines parallel so we can have this uh, so we cut into this uh, into this square small small square and then we can maps maps the surface that is above so let the surface is z surface and we map this all this uh, region here we map one by one to the surface and then we um, we zoom in and we are going to look at the one shape we call it parallel pipe okay and we can see that we can calculate the volume right we can calculate the volume and we say that the small small surface here we call uh, the sample as sk okay and tk means it's a the tangent plane okay if you remember the tangent plane so it's the tangent plane at some certain point let's say because it's at tk uh, let's say it's uh, at xk and then yk and this function the z or uh, f f xk yk right that's a tangent plane and we, based on the assumption that is rk is very small we can approximate and of course if we are telling that um, they are very small we are going to have our idea of limit right now the tangent plane it has two vectors okay two vectors u and v okay that made made make up the the tangent plane no no, no. if you uh, 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 need to review a little bit on tangent plane okay uh, after this course uh, after this session you can re read okay what what this means okay for the tangent plane okay but the idea here is this factor u and v we can forms we can forms 
that this is going to be uh, the delta x in the x axis and the height. The height is f uh, part the f if I write f with small x here, which means it's partial derivative with respect to x of the function. Okay. Because uh, remember that z is our function. So we can uh, partially derive. Okay. And then multiply with the delta xk at k. And the vector v, let me write it arrow, uh, delta y k at j at y axis, and plus partial y axis at k. And this Partial, we can also call this partial x and partial y. They are the slopes, okay, slopes of the line. Or they they are they are the one that built the tangent plane. Okay. Remember you have tangent line, tangent plane. If you have tangent line, two tangent line, it can make the tangent plane, okay, if you remember that. We know that the delta of tk, the delta of tk from when you have, or when you study the tangent plane, this is precisely the, the, the magnitude of the u cross phi. So maybe we can check u cross phi. This will be delta x k, delta y k. This is zero, zero, and partial x x k y k, delta x k. Okay, now if you taking time take times and find the find the determinant of course find the cross product here this will result in let me just give you the final results here this is i minus partial y it's j and this will be delta x k delta y k okay and then the delta t k which means this is we are going to uh, to take the magnitudes from here is the square root Square root of, I think we can just take here, partial x squared and partial y squared and then plus 1. Or we could simply say that we will have 1 plus partial x at that point squared, or maybe let me just still write with the point here.
and then we can say this is the delta a just x and y becomes area and basically what we have now we could sum all the volume okay, we can sum all of the volume or the area or the area and take limit and go infinity or take limit as the this is the norm going to be zero the norm here means that we cut very very small the interval very small then we can make the the area the surface area becomes of course this is uh you have learned this before from the calculus too right and then the a so this is uh maybe let me write some notes here so let f be a function for which partial derivative f of x f of y are they are all continuous on a close close region r then surface area over r this uh, formula okay just, just the intro for the surface area area of the surface or surface area i think i'm i'm not going to uh, give you example here this is basically calculus we, we haven't yet go to the surface integral so this is uh, the, the intro so this is the intro okay, I need you to give you the idea here because when we going to learn the surface integral we are going basically similar okay, basically similar but we are going to not not the region r but we are just going to the uh, the s okay the surface itself okay so we have a function and we are going to double integral with uh the region that we want to integrate is the surface and okay? not the region r Okay, maybe taking, if you want to take notes, okay. I think you can just take notes, the last part here, just the uh, surface area. Okay, just just take notes the last part here and then we start the the surface integral by taking uh wait, wait, where is the oh here okay let's take a look at this visuals this picture we have a surface s okay we have a surface s and now we are going to uh, 
let me let me start with uh, with the uh, if we take ds okay so remember the surface area if we take the uh, differential if we take differential now ds No, this is da okay. this is if this function is called the differential of surface area and we are going to use this function to further uh, explain this surface integral okay. remember recall the double integral we have double integral and the A, right? So this generalize, gen, generalize the single variable, right? And the surface area or surface integral or surface area integral this will generalize generalize the arc line integral Okay, now let W becomes a G, function G in three dimension, three, 3D space, uh, three variables X, Y, Z, uh, define in a 3D space region. containing a surface S, okay? Let's say this is the function of x, y for the S. And let the R project to the surface, like similar what what we have seen before. So projecting this R from, from the region R, project to the surface, okay, project to the surface. And then we define the, the surface S, okay, we define and then making a small, small S and we call the small section, subsection here, we call it delta S K, okay. And it's, it, it corresponds to uh, the partition of the region, okay. And this is also having the, uh, let me write with the green. This is having the, the area of delta AK, right? Delta AK for, for a, this region. And then if we choose sample points, we form the sum, we are getting the idea. Okay, let me write the formal definition for the surface integral. So let G be a function of three variables defined over 3D region, 3D space region containing surface S, then I think you can just write the first part from, from this and then continue then. The surface integral, surface integral of 
t over s is given by s like that and g x y z this is the s okay? equal limit norm getting zero it means it's a lot of um, intervals Just a sample point and then delta s a okay so this first is definition okay after this we are going to look on how to practically use this surface integral notes first notes when g is a constant or when g is equal one so we are going to have double integral s ds this is practically practically this is just saying that this will be going to be double integral over region r of the function g and then we simply change the one plus partial x and then da okay. oh sorry 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 this is supposed to be let me write here G. Sorry. I'll write this one here. Okay. So when G is equal to one, this is just the surface area. The surface area means that this part here okay so we are just taking or or imagine this has become one right so we are just having this one Now, of course, we are getting, uh, because it's on the three variables, it's three dimensions. So we could have some projections on XZ plane or YZ plane, right? So we can also project to other planes aside from the XY plane. So this is x y plane right here x y plane projection here so we can project to other plane as well okay so first uh project to x z plane So we will have and now 
since we are going to have um, projection to XZ plane, we can let the y equal to function of uh, function of xz. So we can uh, we can substitute y become xz. So so this will be function of g xz. Okay. Before it's z function of xy. Right now we have g function of xy. So before before here. Um, the usual case is usual case is z function of x y right? usually now becomes g for y okay and this is becomes and this will be partial x and partial z And we can also project to yz plane. So let the x now maybe function of h. So we can have f, f for uh, xy plane, uh, g for xz plane, and h for uh, y, yz. And practically, we can uh, change, substitute the x. Substitute with h, y, z, and then y, and then z. Okay. And then the rest is taking the partial, partial y. And partial z. Ah, sorry. Okay. That's we can project. Also, we can have some application on mass of the surface, but I think I will skip the mass. Just focus on the. Um, focusing on the, the, the surface integral. Okay, okay the next section, uh, after we have the definition, some method for applying the surface integral. The next section that is also important is the orientations. Okay, we have orientable surface, and we will construct. It's called the Mobius strip. Uh, I think we'll get into that later on. Okay. So I think we can finish until stop stop here. And Friday we can have. I think Friday I will just focus on um, exercise. Okay. Okay, let's move from here. So evaluate evaluate surface integral x z squared df where s is portion of Cylinder in the first often bounded by x equal zero, x equal two, and z equal four, z equal 
8. So we have a cylinder. So if we have this cylinder, means that uh, we need to at least draw what we what the visuals looks like. I think since it's getting uh, giving you the x and z, I think that will be our plane. Okay, so we can uh, focus on the x z plane. That will be the r the region. And yeah, I think. I have the picture. I think I can keep the picture. Oh, I think I don't have the picture. Uh, okay. Can I mean, I think we can just draw. So Z, okay. So Z is here. Z, X, and Y. So z equal z equal four. Say this until here. Say it. That's eight and four. This is zero and two. Will be here. It's too small. Maybe here, so I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I think let me just go down here. This is zero, this is two, this is four, this is eight. So we are having this region here. This is our R. Now the S itself, the surface itself, it's going to be Y equal 2X squared plus 1. Um, so we are going to have uh, 1, 2. So maybe here, x squared, 2x squared, 2x squared probably maybe around here. Ah, to just maybe there. And then until some point here. Maybe just take it until here, okay. And then project it through here. Let's do. Okay, that is first, and then the height, the same height. So we will have connections from here to there, from here to there, from here to there. Okay, so this is our S. Okay. Now we can let this Y is, of course, going to be the X Z projected to X Z plane. So we have. Uh, So we can take the 
partial x is 4x and partial y is 0. So we could take the surface integral and since we are having the z and x as a constant we can use the x or xz but since we can write first the form that we have is 1 and then plus 16x squared right because the other one is zero okay so we don't need to calculate so my suggestion because we have x squared and x we can focus on z first right so we can just write the z and the x if you write the x first you will have some difficulty to integrate this x squared of one plus something x squared and that's um, you don't want to do that right so we could focus here so we could write zero to or eight okay so we could focus and then taking four to eight and then and then we can still uh, still integrate before we get to right at zero two x and 1 plus 16x squared 1 over 2 dx but uh, okay I think this is we can solve this through substitutions right and then in, in summary in short we can write this is coming I will just write the, the, the result so we can write 288 over 9 65 3 over 2 minus 1 or if you, if you calculate using calculators But sometimes in the exam, I prefer just uh, writing in the fractions. Okay. Okay. So this is a surface integral. So the next thing about the surface that is important is the orientation of the surface. Okay, now orientable surfaces. So the easy concept is in the surface, we, we may have some conditions that uh, we may have one side like uh, one side surface or two side surface so this is this is some of the example that we have okay if you see we can have different different direction and orientation of, of the uh, surface if you just take a random surface like this, we see that it can 
it can have two sides. It's one side there, one side here. If you look on the number D here, it's, it's called the Mobius strip. It has only one side. It's only one side. If you if you take the from P, it's 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 just one side, right? It's just one side. If we take, I think the best way to uh, imagine is we take this, we take a, a like a tape. We take like a tape, and then we connecting this A, B, and C, D, but we twist. We twist at, at that part. We twist. Okay. And then if we look at, if we take from P and we, we move along this side, let's say this is the sides here, right? The sides is here, the side is here, the side is here. The side is here, the side is here, but then it twisted and the side is here. Okay, so that, that's called the Mobius strip. Mobius strip. So what is what is this about? Okay, so we can we can we can write down here. The orientable surface, okay, or we say the smooth surface, smooth surface S is orientable, or we call uh, oriented surface. If there exists there exists a continuous unit normal vector function. We call N in the unit normal vector. If you remember the calculus too. Define at each point, at each x, y, z point on surface. Okay, that's what we call it's orientable. So the mobile strip is not orientable okay so this is not orientable ah. not orientable okay or we could also think uh, since unit normal So the surface S can be positive N or negative N. Then we conclude that orientable means have two orientations. The n one or the n positive, uh, the n minus or the n positive, because the Mobius strip is just having uh, one side, okay. Because if you move the speed, it's going to be outside, but we we are not sure is this is n or negative n. So if we take this n, the outside should be negative n, but eventually it's the same n. Right? It's the same end, just, just the one orientation. Okay. And also we call we call um, the vector field N is called 
orientation of S. And then we can define that when we have the unit normal or the orientation going upwards, like here, this is upward orientation. This is downward orientation. So when the unit normals directed upside, then we can call it uh, their uh, upward okay, upward orientation. If it is going downside, it's going to be downward orientation. Okay. Then recall recall from the calculus that the unit normal is or maybe just n to make it difference. Or maybe let me let me just write the definition first. Recall if a smooth smooth surface S defined by functions G. then unit normal n equal 1 over the del del g magnitude del g let me write here the del g means we are, getting, we are using the partial derivative not delta, sorry. Okay. Or we can call this the, the gradient. Remember when we learn the factor field, you have the gradient field, right? Gradient field or the del of the potential functions from the conservative theorem before the independence path, right? Okay. Okay. If X is defined by Z equal function of X, Y, then we can use the g x y z right z minus f x y equals zero or depends on depends on orientation of s Okay, next is, let me show you how we can define through some example. Define the um, outward or inward orientation.
Okay, maybe maybe charge some other batteries. Can maybe wait for a few minutes. Off screen for a while. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Okay, consider, uh, consider sphere radius a. That is a is greater than zero, and we have the sphere as this formulation, and we define g. Then we can define the the uh, the del okay. the gradient we can find the magnitude okay that is uh, 4x squared oh let me Yes, right. Put the four x squared plus four y squared plus four z squared, and we can write this as four and x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This will equal to a squared here. So we can simply say this is two a, right? Okay. Then orientations. First, the orientations for the unit normal x over a is going to be, and then y over a j plus c over a k. And the other unit normal, the 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 negative one, so we can say this n one or it's negative. The negative parts, we can write the negative This is defining the we call the outward orientation. This is defining the inward orientation. And I think, I think, do I have the picture? Oh, I think no. Okay. So, okay. so maybe if we have sphere, so the, the it's going outside. Have sphere here for the second option. This is going to be having inward.
uh, the the last section on the surface integral is about the flux or we call the integral of vector fields So, so if we have a vector field that is P okay. if the vector field is let's say we call the velocity of some fluids, okay. Then volume of fluid that is going through element of surface area delta s per time, per unit time, we can approximate through uh, the height and area of base. This is, we can project the vector field. Let me, let me draw later. Or we could say that the, the, the projection is f dot n. Okay. So this is what it looks like. So let's say we have a surface around here. And let's just evaluate the, the, the small surface there. And this is having a vector field, okay? So it has directions, right? All over the places. But if you look at the surface here, the surface S, we have the normal, the unit normal may be around here. Uh, not good. Maybe here, this is the unit normal N. And let's say we have the vector at this particular small surface. Is this is our f? Okay. Of course, if we if we can make this f projected through there, we can uh, evaluate the the volume. If we can evaluate the volume. Means that uh, this is the delta s, and we just multiply with the height. The height being this this part, right? This part here is the height. The height. This is the area. Okay. So this is okay. The total volume that in in this case, the the volume that passed by. Uh, pass by through S per unit time is called the flux. Flux of F through S. And we can write And based on the outer orientation or inward orientations, we can have uh, the fluid is flowing out or flowing in. Uh, that's based on the orientation.
So this is describing how much the vector field that is passing the surface as. That's the flux. Okay. I think you also learned in physics, right? Okay. And this is surface integrals. And I think we can just continue and um, maybe focusing the exercise on the Friday. I think that's what should be. So the next section is the Stoke theorem. Okay, the Stoke theorem. Okay, so if you have any questions, so please. Uh, we can type in. So, as a reminder, don't forget to work the quiz. And also, um, maybe prepare a, 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 another another homework. Another homework. The homework to help you uh, getting through the final exam. Well, maybe I will give the homework maybe tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Okay, let me move to the Stokes theorem. Okay, now before we move inside the Stokes theorem, let's recall the Green's theorem. So if we have the vector field remember that first the curl f this is del cross f okay let me write completely with the operators Or this is zero, sorry, zero, because only two dimensions, so we have x and y. And then we can write down the curl becomes okay. And then from the Green theorem. We know that we have line integral, closed curve, positive orientations, f dot dr is equal to 
can write this is F and R the R we can write as T ds okay. T is the unit tangent and this is from the um, a green theorem we can write this line integral becomes uh, this double integral with uh, region R and we can say that this is curl F dot K D A Or maybe let me write this a little bit down and let me just recall the green theorem so that you are not lost in focus so green theorem is start from let's say fdr Or maybe just the A. And now, now, this is just to show you the um, f x y. The real problem is when the Stokes in in three dimensions, okay, in three dimensions, because we are not getting this. We have k d a right. This is because we are uh, the easiest one way to visualize this is. Uh, we are on the two dimension or we have we are on the plane and then we have the the curl which is the del across f and remember the cross on the two dimension is getting so if you have x and y axis cross between them you have the z axis right which is this k here okay that, that's why why we have k so we are able to generate kda at, at this very end we have K, okay. So, in three dimension, this is not the case. And, and we are going to have um, basically a real, uh, real forms. So let me, let me getting you the, picture if I have the picture okay here the picture so if you have this okay, if you imagine uh, the Green's theorem but in three dimensions so C is the uh, forming the boundary for the surface Okay, so C is in here, C, forming the boundary for, for the surface. The blue one is the surface. And then we are looking at 
uh, it's going counterclockwise. So if you project it into the R, it's going counterclockwise here, right? So if we imagine we move like this lady here. So imagine we move and we always assume the, the path is counterclockwise. Okay, the path is counterclockwise. So practically speaking, so we have a, let me just write with my own words that the curve or this is the closed curve in 3D space, okay? And then I can write the curve C is boundary of surface S, okay? Similar with the green theorem. And then assumption, or we would just assume that we are having positive orientation. So if we have a vector field, F, that's X, Y, Z, for example. Then what will happen with if we take the line integral, close curve, F dot dr. So this is the question. Now, if we take a look on the two dimensions, we we just have this, the tangent. We have the tangent, unit tangent T, TDS. So let me write. This is going to be F dot T, TDS. Okay. And now the Stoke theorem it's make, so let me write the T, all the, the, the notions here. So T is unit tangent vector. To the curve C. Okay. Uh, pointing. Uh, pointing in positive direction. Okay. So this this is green theorem in three dimension. We can say that the three uh, green theorem in, in three dimension. And let me complete this B X Y Z. Vector field and P, Q, R, and first it's first partials are all continuous in 3D region R. And since the curve is on a positive direction. Now we can write down this S equal surface integral. This become curl F dot the end DS. Where N is a unit normal. Unit normal to the surface S in direction 
of orientation S. Now in more details, okay, let me just explain what this is and then what can we do to make some, give you some example. So this is, suppose that S is uh, face wise and it to be smooth and orientable surface. And bounded by a piecewise smooth simple close curve. See, okay, that's the assumptions. Okay, now let me getting you to the proof. So suppose S is oriented upward and defined by a function and then we have continuous second partial derivative now from the definition of the curl let me just write the component of the curl after we have the cross product. And then if we can write if uh, G if you can write the G as C minus of X Y is equal to zero then the normal then the normal vector is del G del G So G is let's okay. So based on this Z minus F, so we can have minus or partial partial X F. I right and then minus partial partial y of f that is j and then for partial partial z we are having only z here on the z so it's become one so we will have plus k and then the the bottom the magnitude is one plus the first partial and then squared this is also the same for y and squared 
and that's not normal. And then we can have the surface integral, the curl f dot the n the s. Okay. This is going to be we can write all the things on here. So let me let me copy and then we take dot so let me just copy first and then make it smaller a little bit okay now we take the dot with the um, with the end so we take this with this so this will be gone this will be forgot the J okay. and this will be gone this will be also gone and this will be around it's going to be here okay. so we are going to multiply this with the So this is minus and do f do x, right? And then also minus and do f do c. And then adjust that. And what else? This will be. Uh, DA. Okay, and then We parameterize x become x of t so the, that let the curve c x y is the projection of c onto the x y plane. And then this will be the interval for the t. So the parametric parametric for c based on this parametrization is x is x t, y is y t, and z is a function of x t and y t and a also uh, t from uh, from a to b okay. so you can write the line integral f dot dr simply you can start from this uh, okay, now we have additional part here okay so in the green theorem we only focus on these two just two two dimensions two two variables now we have uh, dz okay now we parameterize and take this into integration with respect to t so we change all with the with the t so dx is dt dy also dt and dz becomes with partials we can take partial and plus okay, that's the, the dz okay, take partially so t 
and dx dt plus q dy dt. We change all and then we rewrite. Let me use the green color for here. Okay, and then all will be going to be the uh, integrate with, with respect to dt. Now, if you project this into the curve, into the curve of this xy, so we project the curve into xy plane, then we can, so every, every dx we complete with dx, so dx here and here, dy here and here, so we can have t plus r del f del x dx and plus q plus r del f del y dy so basically what stokes theorem did here is uh, we have the green theorem right at the beginning and the stokes theorem is actually if you look at what we have here when we transform back to with um, using the projections to xy plane to the curve cxy we see that it's, it's not having uh, much difference from the original green theorem the only thing we add is we have the partial this partial that is it's from the z that is function of xy okay and then from here we could take into the green theorem and then we take it and take partials for q plus r okay so now it's become the new q this is become the new p okay, if you remember in the green theorem okay. so q is going to be here the new p is going to be to the minus, okay, the minus. So P plus, so we have a plus R, okay, we have the R. So it is the same as Green's theorem. And now, our idea now, uh, how to define this part here. So we need to, to, to break down this part. So we need to break down and basically we are going to partial, partial, diff, partial differentiate the, all the inside. Okay, so Q plus R and though after y, we are going to partial differentiate and we, are, we will have the second partial derivative inside, okay? So, from here, we go to define, so we need to find the S, okay? We need to define need to be defined or break down, okay? Okay, now we take the the Q first. Okay, so this is basically we are going to partially derive the Q is x y and then having the z is f x y and then plus r also having x y f x y and the f the y okay so we are going to have some chain and product rule together so uh, 
go keto x plus do keto z and then do f do x right okay and then plus r do squared f do x do y and a plus do f do y and then this is do r do x plus do r do z and then we have still do f do x So using chain product rule to get all together, we can match up this and simplify it. I think we can just write as it is. We will write R first. And then similarly, similarly, I will just give you the final results here. We are going to have these results. Uh, to, to differentiate, to distinguish, let me write it the dy dx. Okay, now we need to subtract both. Subtract, okay, we subtract. So we need to subtract, subtract, then we will have. Subtract is equal All right, this last expression is the same as what we have here. Okay, so if we look here, you see that uh, we just cancel, right? 
and this is also cancel. Okay, so the rest is just grouping the df, the x, the f, the x, and the f, the y, the f, the x. Let me give you maybe one or two examples on how to use the stop here and we can have our feedback or our feedback. Let me give you an example. Let S be the part of cylinder. This is four and negative two. Verify question is to verify the Stoke theorem for vector field some assumption S is uh, oriented upward. Okay, the cylinder we can draw first, but I, let me check if I have the drawing. Oh, I have the drawing. So this is the drawing. Okay. So this is one minus x squared. So I hope you can draw this easily. If if I'm not giving you any picture, I hope you can draw this easily. Uh, the key is just to draw to draw uh, to draw the z z equal one minus x squared draw the two dimensions and then extend the uh, into the 3d uh, space and extend the uh, uh, i think if you see here because we have z and x the axis will be the, the center will be the y right as you can see from this picture here the y is the axis the, the center So that is the cylinder. So it's, it's actually cylinder, it's a full cylinder like that, right? But it's cut from the interval uh, 0, 1, and 2, 2 for x and y. Okay, so this is the, uh, the region R, the region R. And we can see that we are having uh, Four, four path C1, C2, C3, and C4. First, because we have the F, maybe we could take the curl F. So we are taking the cross product. And write the curl. This is xy, yz, and xz. We could have uh, 
d dy x c which is zero minus d d z y z. Maybe I'm going to write a little bit down here, and about, and then plus d d x x c minus d d z x y which is zero. And for us, ddx uh, yz minus ddy xy. Okay, and we can take this and we can write the curl f is negative y i plus or minus. Oh, this should be minus, sorry should be minus minus uh, z j and minus x k okay that's the curl f and let the g based on our cylinder equations this is going to be uh, so z is 1 minus x squared right so let's define the new function z equal uh, or z plus x squared minus 1 so that's our our uh, function so this define the cylinder and we can take the normal we can write in the normal equation which is the del of the g defined with its magnitude so we have um, 2x plus k uh, 2x i plus k and this will be equal to the magnitude is 4x squared plus 1 that's our normal and we can just uh, dot the curl and the end Okay, the dot the curl and the end. So let's say we take the curl. So take the, the surface of the curl. So take the curl F and dot the N and then the F. Okay. So based on the N and our curl. So let me just copy. So that we can take this as our our result and make it smaller and maybe just the result that we want. Okay. So this will be equal to curl f dot with the n. So we can just write first is all having 4x squared plus 1, of course. And then minus y will be taken to the negative 2xy uh, minus 1 or minus x, sorry, minus, minus x plus, yeah, it's minus x. Okay. And then the s. And then this will be equal. We are using the surface integral and take this into the R. Okay. And this will be two, negative 2xy, negative x, and this will be the A. And then we can evaluate. I think you can try y or x first. I think the same because it's. All the constant here so I will try uh, X at the last okay, you can just compute compute one by one compute inside and then outside 
and it's resulting in negative 2. So we got the surface integral. And then later, we write down the line integral. Remember, we have four curves. Okay. On C1, let me just take the drawing again. Okay. On C1, we see that the Z is 0, right? And X is equal to 1, so X equal 1 here. So at C1, X equal 1, Z equal 0. So the x equals zero, dz equals zero. So the line integral y zero plus y y zero dy plus zero. This is going to be zero. And then on C two. We are having y equal 2, z equal 1, right? Here, y equal 2, z equal 1, right? Ah, uh, sorry, 1 minus x squared. This is 1 minus x squared here. And then uh, dy is 0, and dz is negative 2x dx. And we can exchange all the formulations, comes 2x dx. So we, can we need to just verify this uh, equations here. Okay. So 2x dx plus 2, 1 minus x squared, and 0, and plus x, um, 1 minus x squared, minus 2x, um, minus 2x dx, okay. dz, dy, right? Okay. Let me remind you that the f, x, y, I also forgot what is the f. Let me just write here. Okay, so we can compute. Compute to here, compute to there. Okay. And also compute to the, to the C3. Let me write C3 around here, so C3. On C3, it's going to be uh, having Z equal to yeah, Z equal 1 and X is equal to root 0. So DX, DZ equal to 0. So of course, the integ integrations, the C3, the line integral, um, all will be zero. So z is one, but x is zero. So zero, right? Zero and zero. So it's zero. We just write this is going to be zero. And then c4, this is y equal to c4 is here. This is negative 2, right? Not negative 2. And z is 1 minus x squared. So dy is 0. dz is negative 2x dx. Oh, we haven't 
we haven't solved the C2. I forgot. So we need to solve this first. C2 is from the x is from 1 to 0, right? C2. Yeah, it's going to go over there, right? So it is from 1 to this is x equal 0, right? For x. 0, 1. Okay. So from 1 to 0 of 2x minus 2x squared plus 2x for dx. And if you compute, this will be equal to negative 11 over 15. Okay. And then c4, uh, this is going to be negative 2x dx minus 2 z become 1 minus x squared with its multiply with 0 and then plus x 1 minus x squared minus 2x dx this will be equal to And if you compute using calculator, this will be, okay. So basically, the line integral for the xy dx plus yz dy plus xd dz, the factor field, is just adding this 2 minus 11 over 15 minus 19 over 15, which is, is 30 divided by 15 is 2, so negative 2. Which is the same result with this Stokes theorem. So, using the Stokes theorem and using the, uh, defining the component into some several paths, they result in the same result, okay? They result in the same value, okay? So, all this C1, C2, C3, C4, this is just my approach to verify that our uh, Stokes theorem are correct. Okay. Now, I, I still have some several examples, also including the line integrals and curl divergence uh, example and also the green theorem. But I think I will keep that on for Friday. So Friday we are focusing on the vector calculus. And I need you I need to know whether when we will have the final exam. Okay, I will, I will have in, in the feedback after this. But before before we end this lecture, this is basically um, the last sections on all the uh, vector calculus. I will just stop here. Uh, suppose that there is one more about divergence of divergence theorem, but I will skip that. So I will just end until Stokes theorem. So your vector calculus will be from the curl of the curl, uh, the divergence, the Green's theorem, the surface integral, the Stokes theorem, and that's it. And that, that's the vector calculus. And your final exam will be about Laplace, the matrix. The matrix is only so some parts. Especially the matrix is for determinants, property of determinants, inverse, Cramer's rule, uh, what else? The eigenvalue, eigenvectors, and diagonalization. Okay, and then just that, that, that's it. If you look on your textbook, your matrix has a lot of sections, but I will just keep just only that, that I mentioned before. Okay. And then the factor calculus. Uh, the curl divergence, line integrals, independence of path, Green's theorem, surface integral, and Stokes theorem. I know there's a lot. So the Laplace part will be around, it's, it will be very few. I will focus on matrix and especially the vector calculus. Okay? So maybe Laplace only 30% or maybe 25. The rest will be matrix and the factor calculus. So maybe a matrix around 35 and factors, the vector calculus will be the rest. 
So 25, 35, and maybe 55. Okay. So mostly about the, the matrix and vector calculus. Or maybe 50-50 on matrix and vector calculus, and the small parts on the Laplace. plot. Okay. So that's it for, I think I will just end up until here. If you have any questions, please, please ask. So this will be uh, the last part for um, introducing the, uh, all the sections. The Friday class is, I think we will uh, focus on practice and exercise to prepare the uh, final exam, okay? Okay, so I think we can have a feedback, okay? Um, I will stop the sharing. And we are going to share again the second, my second screen. Okay, again, then the comprehension 12, probably the last comprehension class okay our our last comprehension in class uh i believe this will be about the the vector calculus a little bit well most of most of it the line integral so i think you can prepare your notes on the uh the vector calculus Okay, we can start and please naming your ID, okay, please rename your, your, your name with the student ID. Okay, uh, let's start A three, two, one. Well, we, this is just, uh, if you remember cross and dot product, what is the characteristic? Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay. See, easy, right? Okay, magical rhino. Yeah. Uh, if you have time to re rename your characters, okay, again, use your student ID. Okay. Prepare for the next question. Three, two, one. Let's start. The curl it, it's asking the curl well i hope it's enough okay three we're four uh, uh, almost four minutes three three and a half minutes okay i hope i hope it's enough okay. well you just focus on just finding the curl okay finding the curl doing some cross product and i think well, it has the E, so you need to be careful with the power of negative. And then make sure you equal the your result with the um, with the constant I give you. And then the question is asking the sum of the constant. 
a plus b plus c plus d. Okay. Okay, if you both all, okay, 15, oh yeah, three more students. Okay, it's negative six, okay, negative six, okay. You are correct. Okay. Okay. Next question. You can start three, two, one. Okay, I give you this a, a simple uh, line in the group. I give you the x and y in parametric equations with parameter t. So I hope you get the idea why this happened. And the, the solution is just using t, okay, using t. Please write in fraction, okay, please write in fraction because the solution is in fraction. Do not write in decimal.
Skip for two seconds. Okay, 30. Okay, 20. Okay, 17. Three, two, one. Okay, times up. Okay, good. One hundred twenty-five over two. Okay, some of you get correct answer, but how many? Oh, two students got correct. Okay, okay, you win the game with Fina, right? Okay, congratulations. So perhaps this will be the last uh, comprehension. So I will average all the comprehension and that will be your uh, activity score. And uh, I would like to know which day you prefer the final exam. I prefer uh, Monday with this day. That should be um, okay for me. Okay, Wednesday, okay? Okay, I think Wednesday, that will be okay. And let's see our uh, class on Pair Friday, okay? We will see if we need more practice. I will give you more practice on Monday. Okay. If not, then I will give you like break time for maybe giving you homework and you can do your homework and that will be also for your additional points for your addition support. Okay, if there is no other questions, so I think we we Yeah, homework will be a homework. I think I will give you tomorrow. Tomorrow I will give you homework. So please pay attention to the Moodle. So the homework, uh, I think I will give you the deadline until maybe Tuesday before the midterm. Okay, eh, before final exam, sorry. So final exam is Wednesday. So I will take final exam on the morning session. So from 9 a.m. to uh, approximately 12 p.m. that will be your final exam so it's around three hours maybe more three three fifteen probably and yeah uh, just wait for the Moodle I will give you the, uh, the homework through Moodle okay? and maybe tomorrow uh, tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night okay, probably that will be uh, homework so maybe the homework itself, uh, since we have still have the matrix and the factor calculus for the homework that hasn't, because for Laplace we have the quiz, so you can consider that as your uh, preparation as well. So the homework will be about matrix. Just a few se sections that the homework three, the homework no. The quiz 2 just include Laplace, okay? Quiz 2 include only Laplace, okay? So quiz 2 only Laplace, okay? So the homework will be the matrix. That is That will be homework 3. The homework 4 will be the vector calculus. Okay? Maybe tomorrow I will just uh, telling you the homework 3 first, okay? And then maybe the, the day after will be the homework for vector calculus. So you can have some some time so yeah that will be uh, the homework okay so I think I think we can stop and if you have any questions you can you can ask